Hey guys, it's Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. I decided to fabricate my own tube steel fenders. And it's a pretty tricky job, but uh, I've managed to do one side already and they're looking pretty good. So this is the tube steel fender here, the first one I made yesterday. And it came out nicely. I used 25 millimeter outer diameter tube with a three mil wall. And this is two mil sheet steel on top. And we've got a few pillars uh, three of them in fact just to help support the whole thing together and it's welded to a three mil template but the hard part will be making another one almost exactly the same so on to the next one so this panel's almost stock although you can see I've cut a little bit extra here just to clear the 35 and this is a Jeep Cherokee pre facelift fender flare and the reason I use this one instead of the originals is I like the way it bolts onto the vehicle with these bolt holes here and it can be popped on and popped off very easily and it doesn't have that annoying piece of crappy metal that always rusts and rusts the rest of the panel with it as it goes. So I swapped those out many years ago when I treated the panel for rust and cleaned everything up. But if we put this back on how it used to be, you can see I made a cut there on the plastic and originally it would have come down here. So you can see that's uh, not big enough at all for this 35 inch tire there. And I have pushed the axle forward two inches um, to center it how I want it to be and to get it away from the back end there. Cause I don't really want to do too much work to the back. I'd rather trim a little bit on the front. Um, but if we take this away, I've got a template made. Uh, and this template is made of three mil mild steel and it mounts here just like that and you can obviously position it how you want it to be and this is kind of what I'm basing the tube fender flare off of and to make this it was super easy I just got this here put it on a sheet of cardboard drew around it moved it along slightly drew around it again to get the extended length that I needed and what we're going to do now is put this on and I'm going to have to take a die grinder and cut this extra piece off here so I can position this properly. Once you start cutting like this, there really is no going back. But uh, what we've removed is just that lip that you find on all Cherokees. You get it on the back as well, though the back's a little tricky because it has a pinch weld, but we can come to that in another video. And that's uh, that removed. And it's gonna allow us to take the template and now we can actually move it around to where we want it to be and use these clamps to actually hold it in place. So I'm gonna measure the other side in terms of this gap here, make sure I get it kind of lined up okay. But I think about there is what we're looking at. Five centimeters, four centimeters, seven centimeters. I'm happy with that, it's looking symmetrical to the other side, although we've had to contort this template a little bit just to follow this line correctly. I mean, I have it five centimetres and four there because I like the flare to sort of sit straight with the vehicle and not follow this line and, and tip downward or else I find that that's not a particularly good look. This is all drilled now to M6. So we're ready to take this off. And the reason being is we're gonna take it into the other garage where the oxycetylene torches and the tube bender is. And then we can bend the tube and check it against the template, just making sure that we're happy with it. Sadly, the tube bending machine's very inaccurate and it's a little bit of a process of doing it by eye rather than doing actual measurements. Sometimes it's easier just to buy 
the actual tube with the bends in already and uh, basically use a thinner diameter tube inside to give it the strength when welding it together and, and that way you can build it far more accurately but in my case I'm using one solid piece of tube um, so we'll see how it goes so at this point in the video I've had to do a voiceover as there's a lot of background noise and people working and the radios going so you can't really hear what I'm saying but you can see the tube bender is a fairly basic bit of equipment pretty useful for bending plumbing pipe which is what I think its true intention is and that makes getting the bends in exactly the right position a bit difficult but what I'm doing is just heating the tube up with oxycetylene so it's cherry red and that makes it much easier to bend and it also stops the tube flattening out when you bend it and keeps it circular so it looks a lot better on the finished product and after I've done one of the bends I match it up with the template and I just check it against the template mainly to make sure that I've got the angles correct and, they, and it matches up with the template and if something's a bit off I put it back on the tube bender while it's still warm bend it a tiny bit more and just make sure I get those angles correct but the first tube I made was one straight piece and it was kind of a happy accident and to make another one exactly the same on a tube bender like this is a bit difficult so I ended up cutting the tube in half and making all of the bends separately and using a bolt with the same internal diameter as the tube to give it its strength so I could move everything around and get it perfect and that's what you're going to see in the next clip. A little bit of a jump forward in time, had, a, had some trouble with the tube bender. So I've just taken the tape off and, and the tubing and disconnected it from these two clamps here. I had, had this supported by cable ties and that's kind of how I'm getting this as accurate as I can by having some cable ties through these clamps really tight and, the, and then just moving it a tiny bit to get to get it within the range to match the other side but before when I made this it was too short so I cut it made another piece and put a bolt in between you can see the bolt there and the bolts really just there to give it strength and when we weld it we'll have it like that with a gap so the weld will go into the gap and connect the bolt and the two pieces of pipe together so then when it's ground down we have a strong but smooth surface and the same goes for the for these here these are separate bends that can that can turn with bolts in too for strength and the nice thing about making it in parts if you aren't great on the tube bender like me is is obviously you need this bit to angle in like that obviously i'm exaggerating that but and this bit to be straight and that can be quite difficult to achieve on the tube bender that I was using the one I borrowed but other than that we're ready really to take this to the other workshop where the welder is get this all burnt in and uh yeah and, and then and then plate it with some two mil sheet steel so yeah gonna get packed up and we'll head over there so you can probably tell it's the following day and a new day new haircut and we're in the other workshop and I'm just getting ready to uh, spot weld everything together on the vehicle before I take it off and then weld it permanently. The reason I'm doing it on the vehicle is just so I get everything in exactly the right place and uh, this template here if it's warped in any way to get it to conform to how I want it to be um, it's not going to spring back when I take it off and then I'll get the measurements wrong so use a couple of cable ties as I said before just to keep it kind of where I want it to be and try to get it like the other side best we can like that, it's almost there actually We want a bit of a gap there, so when we weld, uh, the weld fills up the same down here and here as well. And I'm going to use the magnets to keep things in place. Like that. So that looks about right, but what we need to do is just measure it. So here it should be just over ten and a half centimetres, which it is. Here we're at ten, which we are exactly. And here 
we were just over nine and a half, like that. And here we should be 10, and we are pretty much exactly, you know, we're, we're probably within the range to make it look exactly the same. compare it to the other one. <laughs> it's the first time they've been side by side actually. And they're looking pretty damn close. This needs an adjustment though, something I'm not happy with and two people have mentioned it now, is it goes up a bit here and it's been eating away at me actually and I thought I could live with it. But I'm gonna have to cut down in there, separate the sheet metal from the plate, push it down, re-weld, grind flat, and uh, see if I can fix that. But on this one, I'll try a different approach, as in, instead of laying the plate over this and welding underneath, I'll slot it in and keep it on the same kind of uh, level as this here, you know, uh, make it a bit better. So we'll see. skills. So there we are, this is all burnt in place, nice and solid. Some of the welds turned out great. Others are not so good, but that's just a couple of areas. But all in all, it's really solid. And when we put the two mil plate over, it's gonna help reinforce it more. Um, but there's probably no question really that it warped um, when you're doing welding like this and this kind of shape. You have to take it real slow or after you've welded and it's really hot, you wrap it in something like a big blanket so it cools down really slowly and, um, and that generally helps with warpage. But the nice thing is we'll be bolting it to the side of the vehicle. The vehicle's almost 0.9 mil sheet metal, so that will conform to this shape and everything will, will generally look okay, provided it isn't warped too much. But i uh, going to grind some of these welds down, not all of them. All these will be left as they are. The only welds that will be ground down are the ones on the outside of the pipe and at the top where we have to put the sheet metal and uh, and then we're ready to put the sheet metal on so uh, I'll get the grinder and I'll start working away at this So to try and eliminate such a steep curve but keep a slight one to match everything else, I've just taken a disc cutter, the grinder essentially, and just cut um, a couple of mil straight off the top there. So when we make that down, it's not 
the steep here. In fact, it keeps it much flatter and it should match the rest of the flare, but we'll see how it turns out. And maybe we have to perform some corrective surgery at the end, like the other one. But let's get uh, welding this in. So uh, we bend this round, if we bend it round totally flat we end up with some issues here but we want to keep that slight angle like we kept here so by, by just twisting that we keep the same measurement here and we also build a slant here which, which looks nice um, and it matches the rest of the actual flare. So you can see I've had a few issues here. I've obviously modified the shape to, to be more to my liking, which is just a kind of slight incline. And I wanted to keep that kind of uniform all the way around. So I've basically had to sort of bridge the gap really to, to keep it that way. Um, Cause I want it to be like the other one. And then on the other one, correct this bit here. And obviously we'll have to do something about these bolt holes you can obviously weld studs in if need be but that's gonna have to be bridged with weld and filled which isn't a problem and then when it's ground down um, it'll look nice and we'll obviously use a little bit of filler on some of the welds here just to uh, tidy things up a bit make it look professional but on to the other side This wheel arch is uh, cooling down and uh, it's cooled down pretty slowly actually. It hasn't warped that much at all. I've, I've checked it and pretty happy with it. In fact, I think it's turned out a little bit better than the other one, although we do have just a slight bit of warpage really here where, you know, obviously join this piece of pipe together and then it tends to be a weak point and things have started to move. But other than that, it, it, it's pretty unnoticeable and uh, you know, that's the way it goes when you're working with these things, but I like that one. Hey, it's flat here, a bit flatter anyway. Kind of the same sort of incline down into the pipe all the way around, just very slight, which is nice. It's a nice look, actually. Uh, on this one, we had uh, some problems. This was the first one I made, and uh, I just welded the sheet metal directly to the top of the template as opposed to sort of level it out and uh, it didn't look quite right and I, I'm, I'm not massively happy with it so to correct that I've had to cut this support out which I'm going to put back in of course I'll just put it back in almost exactly how it came out something like that and uh, oh, it's hot. And now we can push this in I've, I've also cut downward from the other side through all the weld and we can we can move that in you see like that and, and essentially make it 
how we want it to be but it's going to be a tricky process I've cut it from here to here because these bends are great and then I'm going to keep everything level with the bends and have that same incline that we have the other side I think that's it much better yeah it looks way better Here are the two arches or fenders and they're looking pretty good. This is the one I corrected and flattened out here just just giving it a little bit of a slight curve and this is the one that we just made. So they're pretty close to each other. There will be some imperfections and some minor differences but you know this is the thing with fabricating stuff like this when you've got to make two um, it's always a bit tricky unless you, you know, you really know what you're doing. Um, but uh, they're so far apart that, and the differences are just really a few millimetres here and there. A little bit of a, oh no, the curve's the same now. It's great. Yeah, so I'm going to get these bolted on because I kind of have to have them on by law. Um, and the police are out at the moment. But the next step will be to give them to a friend of mine who, uh, he said at some point he would shot blast them. And after they've been shot blasted, if they can be, I'm going to get some filler in some of these areas here, in some of where the welds are. Not go crazy with filler, just the smallest amount, just to fill the little gaps here and there. And then basically I'll sand everything down with an oscillating sander, like the, the sand, um, the filler even, and then get it primed with a 2K primer, and then we'll use Raptor liner. I just have to figure out what to do inside really as well. I, I might actually um, consider putting some kind of seam sealer or something in there, but we'll see. Um, it's going to get a lot of abuse basically. But let's get them mounted on. See how much they've warped. <laughs> so this is one of the finished products. This is the one I sorted out the other day. Uh, I've used the clamp compressed it in and put the bolt in but uh, the reality is it's got to come back off to be prepared and then painted and then it's going to be put back on and this here will be repainted and I've got a little bit more work to do and then I have to, to modify the plastic liner inside so that things just don't get destroyed but the one on the other side looks good it's pretty much identical to the other one obviously at a glance anyway there'll be a few measurements that'll be off but they look great, I'm really happy with them. You can see I've compressed this down as well. Bolt goes in here and then they, they do actually cinch up really nicely to the body panel. I, I have a little bit of work to do around here on this one. But uh, we'll end the video here. This was really just the fabrication of these two things or, or how to fabricate one of them anyway. And on the next video, I'm gonna get them prepped. We're gonna get them painted and I'll show you Raptor liner, which is a paint I really like to use. Obviously, it's no surprise to everyone Raptor liner is used by loads of people all over the world, but uh, it's a decent paint. And uh, if you're kind of a DIYer or you have an off roader and you want that kind of robust paint and aggressive look, then Raptor liner is really good. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.